I mean, in order to step such agents. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have roll call. Uh, Mayor Roger Perry. Here. Council President Adina Oliveri. Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley. Here. Councilor Larry Jackman is absent. Councilor Brian Lewis. Here. Uh, we have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay. How about visitors? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Stranger around here. <laughs> Ken Jasper. I've lived here since 1969. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Joseph Parsons. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to pay the bills. I make a motion that we pay the bills. I have a second on that one. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, we have a motion to pass the minutes from our last council meeting. We have a motion to pass the minutes of our last council meeting. A second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion carries. And I guess the decision meeting is September 15th. Then it's okay with it. Anyway, I didn't see that part there. Like I can say, I can't see on these glasses. Oh, no. Right. Okay. Now we have this is time for public comment. This is a time to speak to the city council or the mayor on any subject, including what is on the listed, listed on the agenda. Except for public hearings, time limit is three minutes per person. Do we have any public comments? I um, just want to thank everybody for the hard work. And um, I don't know if it's been an issue or not, but the street lights out on the door of my room. I mean, I didn't call CPI. I didn't. I didn't understand how that works. I actually like it off. Okay. It's nice, but uh, <laughs> don't call. So do the bad guys. <laughs> I just didn't know because there was actually there's two in the room down there that are out. So speaking of that, is the one that parked here out? There's no open the one over right up and down here. Um, I'm not here at night, yeah. so I don't see these. Yeah. So I think I, a lot of street lights are out all over the city. I called CPI a couple weeks ago, and they said it's going to take three weeks to get them met. So, oh, yeah. so, so someone's already been notified. Or, for, yeah. for his two? Uh, so I, I got a list of them all over the city that were out. So I don't know if that includes yours, but yeah, I would, yeah. it's, all, it's also good in, in addition to us to have the people who have an out call them up and go, hey, do something, because CPI is yeah, done. I didn't know if that yeah. was a city thing. I was going to call CPI, but... My wife, my wife was online that she likes it. Yeah. <laughs> Not on, but actually, I think she's good online. Um, we are all paid up, so then <laughs> <laughs> we should be working, huh? I think everything else is fine, still waiting to work stuff, but that's whatever the county right. gets around. Yeah. Everything's good. I mean, I'm fine. Maybe it's going to start raining off nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so the street lights have a weird code number on them. They also have a listing of all the street I, lights on the wall. I witnessed that when I was in Allison's office the other day. I saw the all street lights and actually it's amazing. It says the wattage that they they are wow. and stuff on there. Well they changed all that. They put all the LEDs in that a few years ago. Well oh, mine mine are still happening. They still have to yeah. whatever they have to use. So that liquid vapor, yeah, whatever murky vapor lights. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to make that. If we're paying a power bill, might as well know what's on or off. Yeah. And sadly, my street yeah. got hit when the lights were out, and that's when we got robbed. Oh, wow. that be so, good idea to have lights keeps the roaches away sometimes. <laughs> and actually, to tell you the truth, tell them that you know you still do have the mercury vapor lights down there, they'll probably bring an LED and change it out to an LED whenever they come out to repair it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I believe you have a um, comment. I'm just here on a uh, list of what's going on. Complaints that's been put in from the residents in my area on the on the sack of the excessive noise and pollution. We have a public hearing yeah. about that later. So yeah. That's on our agenda. So okay. We'll talk about that later. Okay. City recorder report. Mm, I'm good. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You're here? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me go over there. Get in there. 
Okay, first off, um, city finance reports. Um, I know Adina had a few questions earlier about um, some of the nitty gritty in there. There wasn't anything crazy, right? Correct. Oh, good. Ask away. <clears throat> it looks to me like you did it on a quarterly. So it's going, uh, I wonder if I'm looking at it, it looked like it was going from July to September. That's just kind of how it, it, it sort of ended up accidentally being, being quarterly. Every report that we give is the, the year to date for the fiscal year. So this is our fiscal year started in July okay. and this is through September. So next year it'll be, or next month, it'll be July through October that you'll see. So it looks like, did we run a deficit? Because um, it looked like we, I looked at the, uh, you know, the balance at the beginning of July. And then I looked at uh, the, the grant. So I looked at what we received as to what we had go out. There was about almost $2,000 deficit from what we received as to what went out. So I was just curious if our finances took yeah. a hit. Um, so that's actually not terribly a boom uh, for city governments and really municipal governments overall. Um, usually about half the time you'll find you, if you run a deficit, it just depends on how much money you get per month. Like we're going to get um, $8,000 in property taxes here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get $8,000 like that for the rest of the year. Right. So that, uh, that kind of operating deficit month to month will happen pretty commonly. Uh, but it doesn't really matter as long as you make it to the end of the year without running into a deficit. If you make it into a deficit at the end of the year, then it causes you problems. Um, we also we st a part of our operating funds includes our beginning balances, so um, the state doesn't really consider it a problem as long as we have the money there. Like I said, yes. Uh, my concern, like I said, is uh, you know that wasn't including the overall grant money and the and the overall balance. So um, going forward here for the next few months, we're going to have water bill on top of that, right? So, because from July to you know September, we didn't have much of a water bill. So I was a little bit concerned yeah. that if we're already running a deficit, how are we going to look in the next couple of months? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That <laughs> that, that makes easy. perfect sense. Yeah. No, it's it's not really going to be a problem, uh, just because that's how governments operate <laughs> throughout the year. It's it's a year to year picture you have to look at mm -hmm. rather than a month to month because our our revenue supply it just kind of depends on how much money we get. Uh, throughout the year because we get certain amounts of money at certain times. Right. I just want to make sure that we're just yeah. not operating off of, you know, grant money again. Because we no. went down that road. <laughs> oh, yeah. We went down that road uh, one time before. And I gotcha. don't, you know, no, want to make sure uh, that we are at least going profitable. And yeah, I think uh, if I had to calculate it off the top of my head right now, our cash balance total, uh, the, the ARPA funds are in the same bank account as the rest of our account, but we have $60,000 more in the bank right now than the ARPA funds. So okay. yeah, it's like 76 is um, 76 of what we have is ARPA and the other 60 is ours that we can do it. Like say, it's only on a month to month basis. I don't yeah. really pay too much attention to, but this was a quarter and it's like, I don't know if yeah. I like that. The other thing that's going to happen is we're going to take the money from our mm -hmm. elder funds and move it over. Now that it's been, I, I want to do that. I want to do quarterly transfers from LGIPs. So that's one thing we're going to do good night is Take the money that's been accruing for the last three months and move it over. So we're getting money. All right, all good. It's not a shortfall. Yeah, it's that not. Yeah, it's, it's not a shortfall. <laughs> yeah, no, our, I made sure the budget was written without a shortfall. It's right. it's that that month to month and quarter to quarter thing may look like shortfalls occasionally, but at the end of the year, it all balances out correctly. Okay. Otherwise, we couldn't legally do it. So. There you go. Was the city making more money out from the water? Right? Um, people are paying earlier now that we have PayPal to uh, get water bills in. Yeah, like bills yes, water bills are definitely going up for a lot of people. Um, That's why our water loss rate went from 6% down to 3%. <laughs> That's yeah. probably the best in this dug on state for water losses. Right. Most people are glad they have a 10% loss of water. <clears throat> yep. All right. I hope that's not the problem is anyway. It sounds it sounds good to me anyway, because I would I want to lost a whole lot less so because I don't 
Stan was doing it was not had a water leak somewhere. We have bad water leak. <clears throat> Right. How many hours he spent trying to find a volume that didn't exist? I know where all the cigarette butts were from looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say it was about 9%. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Okay. That's all we got on that one? Yeah, that's okay. all to define it. So the next step would be um, city updates. So I've had a, I've had a weird summer with lots of absences and lots of resulting catch up because I got bronchitis and COVID. And I had to be at two different conferences, but getting COVID meant I couldn't go to the third conference, which was just really kind of terrible. Thankfully, it didn't hit me so hard that I wasn't able to work. So I was actually able to work remotely the week I got COVID, but it wasn't good work. So I did what I could, but my productivity uh, definitely suffered a bit. Um, I did want to update you about the Oregon Association of Municipal Recorders conference that I went to. Um, so that was a, it was a really fun event. Um, I appreciate getting nominated for recorder of the year. Sadly, I didn't get it, but the person who got it uh, really deserved it. There was the city recorder of Roseburg and she did some monumental homelessness response work this year. So lots of really great stuff went on there. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect of this. I didn't end up learning a lot from it, but the big reason for me to be going here uh, really depends on me deciding to get a, an official certification from the National City Clerks. Uh, Institute. So um, if I'm going to get a certification, uh, that is um, something that's going to require at least two years of my membership in the International Institute of Municipal Clerks, along with OAMR, um, then I'm going to have to go to two of these conferences a year to get training. And then um, I can apply experience points. And then eventually I'm going to have to spend a, a couple, like a week per year at uh, the Northwest Clerks Institute at the University of Puget Sound. Um, so that's something that's going to require the council's support. Um, if we don't want me to get my certification, then I won't put it in the budget. If we do want me to get my certification, then I'll have to put it in the budget next year so we can start working up to that. Um, that's kind of ultimately the goal of this because I, I didn't learn a whole lot there, um, but it's it's something that I have to go and do if I want to get the certification. So what's the cost? Oh, well, the cost of a couple of conferences per year. Um, I don't remember the membership uh, cost off the top of my head for IAMC. Um, but it's that information is online and I can send that, um, I can send more information about the financial impact uh, after this is over. Um, and then it would be additionally the cost of training and uh, attending a uh, week long course in uh, Puget Sound once per year. So the, the next first, couple of years. The conference that you went to that you didn't really learn much, were you able to network? People? I was able so to network quite a bit, yeah. The, the bank thing. Yeah, it was really good. Um, you know, it's it's good to good to meet a lot of these peers in person, talk to people, and I'm officially the mentor for the city clerk of uh, Mitchell, Oregon, in Wheeler County. So I got to meet her in person. That was cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got to meet the new city recorder of Waterloo, which was also awesome. <laughs> so just making friends with everybody I can, and yeah. So that was a really really good networking. I loved that, it. That's awesome. Yeah. So. <clears throat> That's the that. whole thing of, of, your, of us supporting and sponsoring you to do that. Is that something that has to be decided tonight or something we can talk about more later? Oh, we, we talk about it more later. I mean, there's, there's a fiscal impact to it, and we didn't write, write that into the budget yeah, this year. So, you're like, hey, this new thing I want to do. Oh, yeah, well, we can just move back from that. I'm not, I'm not going to move things around for that purpose. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to, like, say we need to know what you know, the exactly. cost is going to be and get yeah. back to our budget. Yeah, exactly. If we're so, running out of deficit. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, you know, it'd be irresponsible for me to just bring this on to you, especially without bringing a you know, financial impact. So I'm, <laughs> this is just kind of like a preview of what that would look like. So yeah. over the next year, as I look at the, the next budget, be like, okay, here's how much it would cost for the city to support me, Got that it. kind of thing. Um, and that's that. Uh, so the last one is a zoning ordinance initiation. Uh, so right now, remember our city zoning ordinance requires that it be a vote of the council to initiate an amendment process. Uh, just finished the total maximum daily load report me and JD worked on for so long. It's, it's, uh, it's probably the most maligned um, report in the state because it's an unfunded mandate. Everybody's required to do it and nobody gets any money or help to do it. And the help they do get doesn't end up really being super satisfactory. I think um, some one of the the cities was telling me uh, there's a requirement to regularly post a notice about the negative impacts of uh, dog waste. And uh, the city asked uh, DEQ, "Hey, is there any requirements we have to put in there for how we need to talk about it?" And they said, "Oh, no, no, no. So, okay, we'll put a notice about it in our newsletter." And they showed that to DEQ, and DEQ was like, "No, you did it wrong." And 
that was about the support they get. So um, one of the things that needs to happen is that we need to have a construction and post-construction stormwater runoff uh, um, elements in our city zoning runoff or in our city uh, zoning ordinance in order to be in compliance with state and federal law about this now. So um, basically what I need the council to do tonight is to vote to initiate amendments to address construction and post-construction stormwater runoff. Uh, and then I can work with DEQ and um, some other cities to find a, a good way to amend our zoning ordinance to actually address this. Then I'll bring it to council. Um, we can look at it in November and then we can either pass it in November or you know wait until December when we've got some more time to look at it. The bottom line is for us to not get fined is to get this in our zoning ordinance by the end of the year. So, so we live on a mountain, so... How does oh, that affect? Downhill. Yeah, yeah. How does that affect stormwater? It's not our problem. It's <laughs> no, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's the funny thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, oh, oh. we deal with environmental people. Oh, believe me. Yeah. Oh God, so it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. New construction, so we're not going to go back to everything that's been here since nineteen. No, I don't, I don't think say, we can do that. It's 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 new stuff. I mean, we also we're also going to have to sign an, an IGA with uh, Lynn County or how they're going to regulate some stuff because almost everything in this report is like, we just have to write in the county does this, then we have to have agreements with the county and that kind of thing. I have to like copy and paste from theirs and it was just a weird complicated thing. So this is the, the big one that they wanted to, I said, can we pass an ordinance at this council meeting? Because it's, it's, it was due this week. So I got it and I said, it's kind of like an IOU. We're going to get this done by the end of the year. Is that okay? And I said, sure. So. We've got to kind of understand it, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not just going to give it to you and go, okay, vote for it. We'll, we'll have a lot of conversations about it. It'll make sure everybody is properly informed. So, if you want us to vote tonight, no, we're no, we're not voting. Okay, we need okay. to, so, tonight, what we need to do is vote to initiate an amendment. And then, once you vote to initiate the amendment, then I can put it together and make sure we have something concrete that everybody understands to vote okay. for. Gotcha. When do we do? When do we do? Every single person at every city council meeting that's talked to it has made that face. No, I mean, <laughs> it's something I brought up when they put that new street in that neighborhood. Where are you going to divert the water? You know, I'll divert it down my street into my yard. And it's like I'm getting ready to do an addition on my shop. Where am I supposed to put the water? We have no city ditches. I dug a ditch in front of my house just to get it water off my property. But it's like, if the that's so, part of what I was talking about, right? I mean, we'll because we, we do live on a hill and it does run downhill. Yeah. So next thing you know, they're going to want to put some, I mean, you get the environmental lawyers involved like that, they're going to start wanting so to like put, in theory, we definitely you know, tanks to, and, yeah. I mean, transfer stations. It's like, yeah, I mean, none of my yeah, water in, my in your yard. Sotoville <laughs> City, that ditch down there along the cutoff. I mean, yeah. nothing, anyway. So, I mean, we just need to have an understanding of exactly what they're after and what's the minimum oh, yeah. requirements. Yeah, like and, minimum. And, uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely have that in the future. And again, we can, I will make sure everybody knows what exactly it is we're voting on. We'll have some really good explanations for that. We can either vote on the amendment in November or December based on how we feel about the understanding, how comfortable we are. I think this might be something we do need two meetings for. So that'll just be the plan. We can't vote on it, though, until we vote to initiate it. So. Right. That's what tonight is about, is giving permission so to... Make, when it make this vote to initiate? <clears throat> right now. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anyone willing to say yes or no to initiate this plan? I move to initiate amendments to the City of Sotoville Zoning and Zoning <laughs> and Development Ordinance addressing construction and post-construction stormwater runoff. Do I have a second on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, I guess. Um, okay, so next thing it must be water update. <laughs> hey, 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 um, we started hauling water, as most of you are aware, I'm sure. And with the fluctuation in the reservoir and the hauling of water, our loss is a little harder to figure out, but it came to about 5%. So, we're hauling one day a week as of right now, where last year we were most of the time doing at least two days a week. So the wells are still keeping up for the most part, but obviously not totally. Um, yeah, we so how, many, how, many, how many trips do you do in a day? 
He's doing three or four, four, I think. And it's about two hour round trip. Yeah. An hour to fill, an hour to dump. Yeah. Is that, that's twice as much as the one truck was doing last year too, right? So we're actually getting more water per, it, per turnaround. It is, well, the trucks last year were 1,600 gallons and they were pretty much constant flow of water. Right. But this does seem to be getting more. Um, which doesn't make sense because he's gone two hours while I'm pumping one. But yeah, and it's a much bigger tank. It's almost five thousand gallons, which is a foot in our reservoir. Yeah, it's almost three times as much as well. That's good. So um, that's where that's at. Now we're gonna be getting a bunch of rain, so make a month or so for that to start soaking into the ground and get down to dock. Yeah, hopefully maybe a little longer. Yeah, we'll a wet a week for time. sure. Yeah, we mm -hmm. Oh wow. Wow. Maybe not. It's what they're saying. We're keeping it above wow. 20 feet. It's a 30 foot tank. So it has not I don't believe it's gone down below 20 feet yet. That's good. I told them that I'm comfortable with it as long as it doesn't get below 14 feet. If it gets below them, then I'm gonna be screaming. Last year we got down to two. So, yeah, I remember getting down below mm -hmm. 10. I remember that. That's scary. Um, now, the Jackman well was tested. I think you guys all seen that email or something on that. It looks like it might be. Looked pretty impressive to me. Yeah, it looked, it looked good. The engineering is going to be crazy on it. Where do we tie it in and how? But that's. We hire engineers if we decide to do something with that. Well, it sounds like I mean, just running it half the time of what they, they run the test on, that uh, it would give us almost one and a half times what we're using per month now, just that one well. And right now, we're trucking in 23,700 roughly gallons a week. So I mean, that will get that in one day, if I remember. Yeah. And, it's, and it was tested in the driest part where all the wells are down, and that was still pumping that much water. Months. So yeah, it, was that's, was uh, it was like yeah. 38 gallons per minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I came up with, you know, just like a thousand gallons a day or something like that. That's that's only running at 30 minutes, right? right. 30 yeah. minutes per hour. That's giving the pumps time to rest too. So and I run most of our wells during the winter months are on five off 10. And right now they're running three and off between 15 and 25. Very that was impressive anyway. It's a long time coming. I, so, my question on that, yeah. though. Well, we uh, do have an item for that later in the. That. Yeah. So, hold my question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. <laughs> later. <laughs> okay, moving on to parks. Hey. We had a pretty big nest of bald face hornets over above the handicapped parking spot across the street. It's been dealt with and it's no longer there. Um, the trees have been taken down by the pit toilet and the logs are up with the compound. I'm not sure where we're at on getting bids for those. Working on it. Okay. That's the next thing. Anybody want some logs? Getting yeah. bids to do what? Somebody to buy them? To that's buy them. Bid? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So offers. We're looking at offers. Yeah. Right. Good. People want to buy the firewood for logs. Some of them are log late. Some of them good, good, make good lumber. Some of them make just firewood, just chunks and logs up there. Less than all. They're random lengths yeah. from about six foot. Wow. Yeah, Streets, I have really nothing to report until county shows up. And working, I'm meeting with an electrician up the compound tomorrow to kind of look at the PLC system. And then I will contact another guy in Eugene next week. That's about all I got. I got something to ask you about streets. Okay. Signs. So I was over at the courthouse um, and I sat down and talked with Roger 
My question about putting up more signs, especially around the park. <clears throat> I'm saying that there are airports, stuff like that, and more signs saying that it's a 25 mile an hour slow down, things like that. And he gave me his card and two other cards here and said that if we do an email and send them an email, they'll try to get us, try to arrange to get us more signs mm -hmm. so that they'll throw a road try to get people to slow down. Yeah, because they have to do it because it's their roads. It is yeah. their roads. We've okay. got, it's Roger, it's the Darren Lane, the administrative officer, and then Wayne Luke, it's the roadmaster. So if we want to write an email and send it to all three of these guys, we'll try to get us some more signs. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of signs, there's a sign lying on its side. Caddy corner across the street. Mm -hmm. Oh, the 25 mile yeah. an hour sign. Yeah, you're supposed to put that back when you're done with the house. Yeah. Yeah. I was under the impression that they were going to put it back right after the house got moved in there, but. And is that our, that's not our street, our sign? County. County. That's also county. Yeah. Yeah. Any of the streets that have the painted yellow line? They're not allowed to remove that, are they? Huh? So they're not allowed to remove that without not really. giving permission. That, that's a felony, isn't it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I believe it is. You're not supposed to mess with it. Right. <laughs> if something County happens, property. If some wreck, if something happens, they could be liable. Hmm. So this is bad skateboarding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that's a crime. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Yes, uh, again, all done with the water report, the city park report. Okay, we're down to new business. Yeah. We have A is resolution 22-9 LG IP transfer. That's right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we don't have to do a script for that one. Don't do a script for this one? Nope. Okay. So uh, quarterly, we're going to be moving uh, money from our LG IP account into our operating account. Um, the Full amount for the first three quarters of this year was ten thousand dollars two hundred ninety ten thousand two hundred ninety four dollars and thirty five cents. So resolution twenty two and nine authorizes me to move that over into our operating account. Okay, a motion on that. I move to adopt resolution twenty two and nine. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now, we, need this. we got another resolution, 22-10, water restrictions. So um, we went into water restriction at a staffing level in uh, July. The city's water ordinances actually require the city council to formally be the ones to declare that there's water restriction. So we need to actually vote to say that we're in water restriction. And this um, backdates our water restriction to uh, July 1st, 2022. And it will end as soon as the city council says that water restrictions are over. I know that we agreed on it back in July. I mean, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of, it was brought up like, hey, we're in water restriction. Everybody said, okay, but there was no actually formal vote. No motion. So, okay. Yeah. So that's the, the one thing. If, some, if somebody goes, well, when did you vote on that? I'll say, well, we talked about it. And their attorney will say, yeah, you didn't vote on it. So we're going to vote on it. All right. I move to adopt resolution 2210. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion carries. Okay. So I'm going to go down to C, which is supplemental budget hearing. Now is the script. <laughs> Can I use this one to say this first one here? Uh, yeah, I think it should say budget hearing script on top. Supplemental. Yeah, budget hearing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will now open a public hearing to consider resolution number 2211 adopting a supplemental budget. For the year 2022-2023. The hearing, hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening statement and set any ground rules. This will be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest on the part of counselors. But the testimony will be taken, will be then be taken, given by others in support, and finally those who oppose. Council may ask questions of the speaker at any point in this hearing. The public will have the opportunity to ask questions during this public testimony. 
setting the ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address, for the record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although this is not necessary, in most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to no more than five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objections to the city council's jurisdiction this matter? Does any city councilor have any conflict of interest with regard to this request? City Court actually had the captain can answer any questions. So, so I'm going to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> all, all people wishing to testify, please remember to give your name, addresses for the record. Do other people wishing to testify for the or again for or against adopting this resolution 20, 21, 2211. Anyone wish to testify in rebuttal to this testimony that has been offered? Okay. All right, I guess I'll go for it. So uh, this is a supplemental budget hearing. Uh, we got $60,000 last year from the legislature for community well assistance. And at the end, the end of the fiscal year, uh, 5,280 about of it was left over uh, kind of unexpectedly. So uh, we still need to use that. Uh, at their, right now it's sitting in the unappropriate ending fund balance. You really aren't supposed to touch that unless there are some very special circumstances. This one being the legislature gave that to us to use and we can't just leave it there. So um, we have a legislative mandate to use these funds for community well assistance. So I recommend uh, moving it into the equipment and facilities repairs and maintenance requirement in the general funds water program. Uh, first off, we had some additional water meter install. So that's uh, install costs that start came into this fiscal year rather than the last one. Um, Buckmaster had to come in and install a couple of the last remaining water meters. Uh, so we can use uh, these funds for that. The other thing we wanted to use them for is the well test that occurred. Um, I'm still waiting for a confirmation from the state that we are in fact allowed to use that, but I just want to make sure that um, we have the money in the budget officially uh, once the state approves uh, changes to the contract that we signed. So this uh, budget resolution will integrate that uh, 5,200 uh, on uh, not into our budget so we can use it for community well assistance as mandated by the legislature. What was the other fifty-four thousand dollars used for? Was that the meters? The meters. Okay. Yep. That's it. That's it. So, so we have to make a motion on this. Question: Will yes, it use so. it all up then? There will be like those. I think there will be thirty dollars and fourteen cents after that. We'll figure out a way to use that correctly. And where does the money for the I'm going to use wrong term TLC the computer? Our plan. Okay. So, uh, yep. So I move to adopt resolution 2211. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so now this is ordinance. I got to use that sheet now. Yep. Oh, I thought. Strap in, folks. Okay. Open, opening a public hearing. I will now open the public hearing in, to consider the ordinances. The hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make the opening statement and set any ground rules. This will be followed by a disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict interest on the part of council members. Henry Court, Alex Manhattan will present the ordinance. <coughs> council members may ask to ask questions of the speaker at any point during the hearing, the public will have the opportunity to ask questions during the, their public, test, public testimony. When testifying, please give your name, address, and address the record. For those of you testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible, although this is not necessary. In most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to no more than three minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objections to the city council of jurisdiction in this matter? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, does any member of the city council have any conflict of interest with regards to this request? If so, please in indicate the nature of your conflict of interest and leave the council table if necessary. Has any council member had any pre-hearing pre contact with any party involved in this case? 
either for or against this proposal? If so, please explain your brief contact here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I spoke with Council President Olivares about uh, the uh, proposed ordinance uh, earlier this week, so she didn't tell me to make any changes or anything. She just asked some questions for clarification. So that's okay. the one thing that could <laughs> could be there. Okay. <clears throat> Another heard. Okay, Alex McCadden, State Recorder, will please be present set ordinance. All righty. So guess how many shutoff ordinance procedures we have? Two. <laughs> so. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up in our ordinances, as I've said before. So the thing we wanted to deal with tonight uh, is one that we have two different city ordinances that address shutoff for non-payment. Uh, one that was uh, put together in the 1980s and one that was put together uh, five years ago. I've been following the one that was put together five years ago. So uh, the first part of this is to delete the uh, shutoff procedures from 1982. Um, seems pretty prudent to do right now. Um, the other thing additionally, uh, right now, the well, when the uh, ordinance was passed in the 1980s, the city council was officially called the common council. We're now the city council. Uh, the public works director was the public works superintendent. So we're changing all references to common council, the city council, and all references to superintendent to um, uh, public works director. <clears throat> um, and then uh, lastly, we wanted to uh, amend the uh, way that we are handling water bills right now. Um, we have uh, the, the administrative procedures that have been followed for some time. And you know these were the ones that were explained to me by council president, that were explained to me by her predecessor, um, who were ultimately wrong the whole time. So um, we wanna make sure that we're amending the uh, ordinance to reflect the, um, the way things have actually been done for quite some time, probably for the last several years. Uh, so that's those are the the changes here. The reason I put it I, I asked to put in an emergency clause uh, is that right now there's civil liability for us and for people who are going to engage with the city as utility users. Uh, if there are two different um, clauses, you know, there's there's just a lot of confusion that could cause a lot of court cases if somebody got really mad. So we want to make sure that there's no civil liability for us and that there's no civil liability for our users. They may hop online and see, ah, well, this is the shutoff procedure. I followed it and then go, sorry, no, it's not. And they're going to go, well, which one is it? So that's why I put in an, an emergency clause. The emergency clause uh, means it immediately goes into effect. So. So I do have a lot of questions. Good. Because um, this is actually uh, a lot of changes that's going to be happening to ordinance 8208. Yep. And <clears throat> I guess. Some of them I do understand, and actually, Alex, you did a really good job of going through here and kind of explaining exactly the areas that you were going to try to go through and, and audit. Um, but there were a couple of questions that I had. Um, let's see, and I guess the first one is kind of a reference. Let's see if you no later than the 25th day of the month. But then there's a grace period on that, right? Um, yeah, so the the way we do it is that the currently the bills are uh, due the fifth day of the month following the, the month that they're shipped, but under ordinance 1700. I think it's ordinance. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, the the <laughs> believe me, it was very yeah. complicated. We don't have to. We don't get to do uh, late fee procedures until sixty-one days after the case. Right. Because then this one here it actually stayed forty days. Yeah. Because it was uh, twenty days, ten days, and then ten calendar days after the urgent notice. So it looks like that's going to get cleared up and taken out. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, one of the things that I saw in this Oregon fees compared to meter testing. So we're at a different level now with our meter testing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's all electronic. And I guess I kind of got a little confused in going through this thing and, and looking at it. Here it states that we're doing a $15 per meter testing. If you, let's see. On customer's request, customer give no less than seven days notice. Um, the water utility will require the customer to deposit a testing fee of $15, but in here it goes up to like $250. Yeah. 
So I thought that was. Uh, oh yeah. So that one, that one is about calibrating or reinstalling a meter. I think. Isn't that about testing as well? Uh, I I wouldn't consider that testing, right? Calibrating a meter. There's these meters we can't make them. Uh -huh. Okay. So the is old this... meters, yes. The new meters, no. So if the, the customer guy, comes yeah. to us or to you and asks for you know justification for their bill or something like that, what do you? I can pull up a report that shows every day what they're doing. Okay. With their water. Um, yeah, these are sealed units. They're ultrasound instead of mechanical like you were going for. So it's not going to be charged a two hundred and fifty dollar bill for <laughs> asking to check their their water. I wouldn't think so. No. Okay. So that one I just kind of had a little yeah. question about it went from fifteen dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Like, that's a little that seems a little aggressive. Beyond <laughs> inflation. Yeah, exactly. We do need to figure out, and I've briefly mentioned to Alex, we need to figure out how you guys want to build new construction, mainly habitat for humanity things in mind, because they're going to need to get meters that are what we have. Yeah. Right. And they don't, they cost a lot more by them one at a time than when we bought them in a group. Yeah. There, there are city ordinances that do cover how they're supposed to uh, pay for that and that kind of thing. I already reached out to um, Camp, Camp Strip. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they gave me a quote. So Habitat for Humanity knows how much the unit itself is going to cost, and they also knew I, I gave them the city ordinance specifically that says how much they're going to have to pay us to get it installed. So. When were the uh, values on 1701? When were these values changed back in 17? Yeah. So they haven't been audited since or changed since? Because I was looking at. Let's see. I'm trying to find the. Uh, we no, did this make one, one change to uh, water prices um, a couple months ago because the we had our, our one of our tiers went down instead of up, so that was the one change that's been made so far. Yeah, this is where I kind of had an issue where I was going through and looking at it. Um, whenever you talk about uh, commodity charge during water restrictions, so if you look up here where it says non-restrictions and it's going from five thousand to ten thousand. Um, it's saying 1750, that's non water mm -hmm. restrictions. And the restrictions, it dropped down to 1612. So I'm not sure if that's a typo. I guess that wasn't updated. Or or we, did, that, we did change that. that last was this month. supposed to be switched? That this is supposed to stay up here and this is supposed to go down here? Yeah. Um, so 1750 comes down here and 1612 goes up into the non restriction. Yeah, I you know I think that was it. So I'm going to have to go back and because I was pretty sure I had updated that already because we did, we did change those amounts. Last like I said, I was a little so, concerned about this being a yeah, no, that's, typo that's, in, the, yeah. in the ordinance. So I, Yeah, I have to go back and look why that is because <clears> I was pretty sure I had gone back and changed that because the, the ordinance updating the price is on the website as well. And this is only done with the approval of council and mayor, right? Yeah, the council. Okay, so we go through there and verify because I don't remember when Judy was in there. Um, she liked to raise a lot of people. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying like that. that. She's trying to make money for the city. Or her profit, I don't know. But there's a lot of uh, cost in here that seem kind of high, <laughs> tell you the truth. So, um, so and this like, is how old is 2017? 17. That was on council. So I don't remember going through all this. That's why I'm kind of bringing it up yeah. Maybe right now because this seems, you know, street wide, right away, we can see a um, thousand bucks. Fifty dollars for, I mean, fill an excavation ordinance. So if you bring up dirt or something like that, it's fifty dollars uh, or fifty cubic yards for fifteen bucks. But it gets up to, uh, I mean, it goes through several. So is that the way I'm reading that right? So if you bring up dirt to your property, you got to pay a price. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. If we've had that ex city excavation, there's like a, an agreement we have with Lynn County for it. All has to be. Figured out too. So. Okay. I, I think it would be beneficial to just review all of those. I know that I'm the culprit for the um, the permit to be able to use water um, during the water restrictions by you paying an extra fee. That's something I did where I came before. Where if you wanted to power wash your house, then we were in water restrictions. 
there was a way you could come and get a little permit form. Right. But the amount that was um, put for that, I think is crazy. Because you're already going to pay more for your water. And yeah. where I came from in a very much higher cost area, it was like $25. And so I, that, I think we talked about that the other day. I think it would be a good idea for us to revisit our needs and see what's it seems like say yeah. some of them seem very excessive for a you know for a small community on some of the stuff and some of it I mean just doesn't make a lot of sense as to why it's even in there and like I said I was sitting on council in 2017 and I don't remember these going through and being reviewed and I'm just kind of wondering if uh, somebody didn't go through there and edit it without council approval. I hope not. Okay, so what I did for all of these was I just I went to the resolutions yeah, books that. that are over there. Yeah. <laughs> So I, the only copies of any of the ordinances we had really, I and mean, we had a few of them digitally on the laptops, um, but there are like 10 different laptops in there that have got probably a couple in each. So the only really um, uh, official versions of any of these ordinances I had, the ones that were in the books, those were all signed by the mayor and recorder and stamped with the official Do we still city have those? Seals. Yeah, they're up there. For the old ones all the way back to 2012? Uh, we have them all the way back to 1953. Oh, good. Actually, I have them all the way back to 1880. So. I was going to say, because <laughs> I'm not I mean, joking. We don't have them. Yeah. <laughs> when you try to go through the website and look at, you know, where these are getting referenced from, you know, it was abolished. It was abolished. It was abolished. It's yeah. Like, so that's that's what I do I when like I. That either. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So anytime we make, uh, there there are a lot of ordinances over time that have been completely changed or rearranged. So rather mm -hmm. than. Um, uh, typing out the ones that are no longer in effect. Um, I just said this was in effect, it was abolished, it was replaced by this one. And then people can just kind of go through the chain and figure out who's the most uh, current order. And that's thing. fair as long as we got a reference to go back to, whether it's a paper copy or whatever, to yeah. say, okay, these changes yeah. were not done without approval. Yeah, we're, uh, we're mavericks when it comes to records. That's why one of these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> not sure when. Yeah. I'll catch up with you and maybe we'll go through through a couple of them and just kind of verify that maybe a prior administration didn't uh, edit some things on their own. Oh boy. Yeah, that'd be bad. That would yeah, be bad. Be, that would be bad. Yes, that again all this all the re the ordinances and resolutions in there were signed by the recorder and the mayor at the time. Okay. So um, all righty. Well, I'm done with that. So concern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is that's a good thing. We can go through that definitely. Okay, so anything else we can do with that one? Or? It's got to be uh, suggested because there is a lot of amendments that need to go through there unless other councils would like to go through and try to review what some of the some of them were. Some of them were just some wording, like I said, the yeah. thing that I saw in there was, um, you know, the typo from the restricted on a time frame. Yeah. One of them stated something about uh, the director and not including the mayor. So what would we do if we didn't have a director? We still got to have somebody that has, you know, be able to get permission to do something. No, no, no. Okay. Sure. Somewhere. I can't remember. Um, so that that would that would that would constitute a more substantive change to the ordinances, and the city charter doesn't really want us to make substantive changes to an ordinance during a public hearing. Okay. Um, the idea is that right now we're not like when we talk about the public works director doing things, we're just changing the title. Um, right. So we can go ahead and do that. We can, if we want at the next um, meeting, like talk about um, things we want to make to changes. So like, right, I can just plan on next meeting and go, hey, we're going to look at some changes to, you know, what do we do if there's no public works director? Who's, wh where's, what's the continuity of government? That's definitely something we can address at the next meeting. Well, I was looking at, like I said, as you made a lot of references as to what you were going to change in here. So I figured while you were changing it, it would be a good time to go ahead and. Yeah. Yep, that's something we can definitely adjustments. put on the, put in the agenda for next time All around right. this. Okay, so yeah, I'll make it a motion thing like on this. Yep. Uh, so if any of the members of the public who want to. All good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I just want to talk about paper. Jeff was on that. But... Oh yeah, so those those are ordinance eighty two oh eight and seventeen oh one eighty two oh eight is our water system ordinance and seventeen oh one is our fee ordinance and then those are both on the city website. So, right. so um, I make the move to to move to read it. Uh, 
Read by title. Okay, I move to read ordinance oh. 2207 by title only. Okay, gotcha. So I move to read ordinance 2207 by title only and adopt ordinance. Uh, Mr. Mayor, ordinance 2207, amending ordinance 8208 and declaring an emergency. Hereby read by title. Okay, yeah, you might have to read that or you just said it. So I just did it. Ah. Yep, now we count the votes. Do we have a motion? You made a motion. Who's got a second for that motion? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries. <clears throat> now we start it over for the next one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that was just 2207, right? Yep. Now I got to do this here again, right? Yep. Okay. I'm opening a public hearing. I now open a public hearing to consider the ordinance. The, the hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make it the opening statement and set any ground rules. This will, will be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest by the, the part of the council members, city recorder, Alex McCadden, will present the ordinance. Council members may ask questions of the speaker at any point for the hearing. Public will have the opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. Which, when, we, when testifying, please give your name, address, and address for the record. For those of you who testify, please testimony related to the application. Please be as concise as possible. Although this is not necessary in most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony no more than three minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objection to the city council's jurisdiction in this matter? Here, none. Does any member of the city council have conflict of interest in regards to this request? If so, please indicate the nature of your conflict of interest. Leave the council table if necessary. Has any member of the council had any pre hearing contact with any party involved in this case? Either for or against the proposal. So please explain the pre hearing contact. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think you may have talked to um, Mr. Lynn Jasmer about a property that is generating some dust pollution and possibly violating the noise ordinance um, due to some motorcycle activity on their property. Um, I think he had said he had talked to you before he came and talked to me about that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's I the was one calling and said that I had to talk to the city about it. Yeah, I had to talk to you about it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's that part. Okay. I, I, I will have Alex McCadden, a city recorder, read the ordinance in its entirety unless someone on the council would like to make a motion to have it passed by title only. The city recorder has fulfilled that. The charter requirements for the ordinance to be read by title only. Well, uh, I mean, we can do the public discussion first and then we can vote on it. <clears throat> so, uh, first up, uh, so this is ordinance 2208, amends ordinance 1503. There have been a lot of complaints in the city about a specific property that's generating a lot of dust pollution um, and uh, also generating some excessive noise during the day. Uh, and there's like a, a motocross track on the property. And residents in the area are very concerned that they're seeing some threats to their own health. And Mr. Uh, Jasmine here is going to talk about that. Um, and yeah, we don't really have a, a dust pollution ordinance on the books. Many cities do. So um, this was brought up as a proposal because there are a lot of complaints that are coming in that people are have experiencing some uh, threats to their own health and safety. The other thing is excessive dust pollution is making their prop their Vehicles specifically like a lot dirtier, which means they have to get car washes. We are in water restrictions. They're not allowed to wash their cars. Uh, so that's why this was brought up. Uh, yeah, so that's the first thing. Any questions? I've got comments. Okay, go for it. Um, my comment is, you know, basically we already have ordinance in there for noise pollution, right? Yeah. So the biggest thing that this thing is addressing is the dust. Dust, yes. Correct? Yep. So, you know, I mean, I've lived out here since, you know, the 80s myself, so a long time, and I realized, you know, this is a rural community. You know, in a rural community, you're going to have farming, mm -hmm. you're going to have large gardens. Um, we, live, we live in an area to where you need heavy equipment to get, you know, to do yard work around here, right? So if you decide to do something on your property or something like that, 
and somebody complains about some of the dust getting kicked up, you know, it's going to create a bit of a problem, right? I mean, I think there are, you know, in, in this case here, I think there should be other ways to address it other than setting a city ordinance for a rural community, you know, to have issues with, you know, airborne dust. You know, I can understand if you're Los Angeles, even Lebanon, where you got, you know, pavement everywhere and you just, you know, but that to, to open the door to have, you know, the community come up and complain, you know, about what their neighbor's doing without addressing it with a neighbor or having a conversation with them, or even having the city, you know, have a polite conversation with them as to, you know, what can we do to help control this? You know, I just don't know if we really want to put this into an ordinance in a in a rural community. I don't know whether it's our, you know, our our best approach. Mm -hmm. So right now with the fire restrictions and stuff, can you be riding a motorcycle around that way? I mean, I can't drive my tractor. I can't run my chainsaw right now. I haven't been doing that myself with my tractor or anything like that because I don't want to, you know, have a spark. I got some stuff I still need to get. But it's, it's more, you know, being my conscience, you know? I mean, I was living here whenever the gentleman over here was mowing his field and he yeah. caught the, oh, the forest on fire. I watched actually I was driving by whenever I saw him jump off his tractor and I could see the fire going up into the tree line. So I know what the repercussions are, but people do use four wheelers, you know, on their property, you know, I mean for haying or, you know, feeding their animals or, you know, livestock or something like that. So you can't really put an ordinance in there about controlling motor vehicles during this time either, in, in, in my opinion, in a rural community, it makes it very, very challenging for a lot of people to, you know, address their, their property issues. But I say something, I understand your uh, views on it, but you know, I live closest to this. Mm -hmm. And this has uh, been going on for years. Teachers at school have complained. The residents have complained. They have one resident who wouldn't sign that because she's afraid of the other girl. And also, she's got cancer and she's been hard to breathe. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was just like a farm or something, somebody's got to work, something, fine. But this is a, a daily occurrence, five days a week, six days a week. Three or four hours at a time. So you're saying if it was a farm, you're good with it. It's but since it's a fun or, activity, no, you're not. No, if it's a fun activity, fine. If it is controlled, I have my son and his grandson back in my place. They have a trail. Mm -hmm. They ride the four wheels. Right. They only do a 15, 20 minutes a day. There's no dust and there's no excessive noise. The noise I hear. Unpleasant. Right. I cannot talk on my phone. I cannot sit and have a peaceful meal. And I can't even watch TV because that. And people, we have one gentleman come down from Salem, moved here just for the peacefulness. Right. Has anybody went and talked to the neighbor? Or yes, or I have many. They have been threatened. Oh. And I've been. That's the time to get the law involved well, they if you're being threatened. That. I mean, they should not be able to threaten you just because you, you know, you want to have a neighborly uh, conversation. Well, there's just one person that did that across the street, just like last week. I was out there. They get mad at me because I take the pictures of the desk. Mm -hmm. You want to see them? I got plenty. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that, you and know, I mean, being in a rural area, just, there's a lot of dust. Yeah, the main road. You cannot see across to see the houses. Cars I had to almost stop to go through there. And I think that that might be a way that you know that we need to approach it. I mean, on, on maybe on a couple of different levels. You know, as far as to one aspect, your you know question about fire danger, right? I mean, if you're out there riding a motorcycle for five hours at a time, as compared to using a four wheel to go out and feed your livestock, now that's a different you know, a different scenario. Now, you know, as far as drivers driving down the road and not being able to see and creating a safety yes. hazard, now that's something that needs to be addressed. And yes. how do we define excessive dust pollution? Exactly. 
Um, you're, you're entitled yeah. to your, your uh, time. Mind well, mind. Uh, so I I understand where he's coming. I'm just right down there. I know who he's talking about. I won't say, but um, like Jeff, I agree. We're rural area. You know, when the Evans were down there, they're always ripping cars through that field, and it's loud. And the kid, the kid that he's talking about, the, the family, um, it's a four stroke. It's loud. I hear it all day long, Saturdays. And I thought I, I work from home, so you cannot hear this thing run, right? I know right. when it's running or not. And um, I was impressed that he doesn't really do it when the school's in session, well, he's probably in Last school, year. but I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, uh, as of recently, yeah. and I hear it ripping, drive, sorry, and riding it, and I just happened to leave one day and left my house, and he's not exaggerating about the, the dust. I turned to head towards the school, it literally, I could not see through it. It was, it wasn't just like, I mean, I kind of laugh when I hear people about getting their cars dusty. It's like, come live on my street. Right. It, it's gravel. You know, I mean, UPS trucks all day long. I can't keep my stuff clean. <laughs> so, you know, wine, wine to somebody else. I want to wash my stuff. But um, I don't care about the dirt, the sound, really. We're in the country. But when I did see that dust cloud, I was like, oh. I actually was kind of shocked because all the wind was blowing west. So it blew over the road. Mm -hmm. And I mean, us knowing that road, I can drive through it, don't care. You know, but I mean, if you're not used to it out here, I mean, you literally couldn't, you had a great example, you could not see through it. So I don't, you know, the thing with the dust, like you're saying, but this is very excessive. And I mean, when you're, when you're blocking lanes of traffic from the dust, like that, it's pretty easy. I mean, if you ever hear it, I bet you it'll be riding well to do rain on Saturday, but. When you hear that thing ripping, just go down there and you'll, you'll I was going to say, I have, you know, people from my area, there's a bike rider up there too that, you know, I mean, a young, a young uh, man, it may not be as big a bike as that one, but, you know, he's out there riding it just about every weekend and, and whatnot going through there. So I do, you know, I do understand that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know that we really, at this time anyways, need to put this in as an ordinance or if there might not be another approach that, you know, maybe the city can send them a letter stating that there's concerns, you know, I mean, you know, I'm curious what the liabilities are if they go off the property into the road and hit a car the, when they're jumping and stuff. There's yeah, that's, that's an well. issue. I mean, we do have, you know, ordinance in there about riding four wheelers and well, it's against the law to be riding a unstreet legal bike on the road. Of any road, you know, whether it's city or county, loses control ends up out in the tracks. I think it's a it's a tough thing because if there is a noise ordinance, we got a sheriff out here with the decibel reader, and that bike comes in under the decibel. And it's between the time frame. I, I know, and I'm just saying, you know, I mean, if you're able to make as much noise as you want from eight to eight, mm -hmm. can't really say much about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do understand your concerns with the dust, because I mean, I don't know if we really want to start making all these fine point restrictions right. to gain on stuff and i don't know how well, we people abuse it will people. abuse it going in the future yeah. that's that's my concern yeah. right i mean you had just yeah. stop you know if i'm not a happy neighbor with you you know you're over there tilling up your garden and i'll say it's bullshit yeah, and, no, you know no, i think you need to be fine or whatever so um, so it's just um, like me down here blowing the leaves and stuff i'm creating quite a bit of dust going up the hill too exactly so you know, I think my opinion on this anyways, is that, you know, maybe, you know, we have Alex write a letter from the city stating that, you know, there is a concern about, you know, the activities going on here. You know, is there any way that we could work this out? Um, you know, and if they, you know, get to a point where maybe we do have to make the ordinance. If they're not willing to work with the city, maybe, you know, we will have to write it into law that, you know, hey. Was it, wasn't a complaint lodged though? Was lodged. So lodged? the complaint that was lodged um, was about um, it just said excessive noise and excessive oh. dust. So that was the two things in the thing. And I looked up and the nuisance ordinance doesn't say anything about dust. So mm -hmm. the only thing there was excessive noise, but that one's a little harder to um, enforce. So our, our noise ordinance says you can't generate excessive noise, particularly between the hours of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. So during the day, if they're generating excessive noise, um, 
I officially did are kind of not supposed to, um, but there isn't as much of a um, a rule about it because the rule is it, the the idea of the rule is to focus on ensuring there's no excessive noise at night um, and during the day is kind of an afterthought. So my understanding is they have a private well on that property. Um, I don't know how good it is or whatever, but you might suggest that if they have a private well, they can. Yes. Well, I know they have one. I have one. <clears throat> There's not enough water to keep that. Okay. okay. When the complaint was raised before, did the city take any action and go talk to them? That's kind of what I was asking. Um, I don't think there was a whole lot that could be done because the big focus of the complaint was about the dust that was being generated. Um, and the other thing was just kind of like, and the, the the excessive noise during the day, the way the nuisance ordinance is constructed is a little harder to enforce because it's a little more subjective. Um, during the day, what counts as excessive noise, I hear a lot of excessive noise all the time. Um, right, I mean, you're gonna be out there with a chainsaw or something like that. Yeah, you know, right. The trucks uh, I mean, going down the highway yeah. and yeah. take breaking all the way through town. I do think that, you know, to Brian's point too, that, you know, you know, if you do, you know, if we do decide to have you send them a letter, um, you know, kind of make mention in there that we do have regulations about, you know, I mean, running motorized vehicles for long periods of time, you know, as far as, especially during the summer months where it could create fires, um, put that down as one of the concerns. And then blocking the, the safety issue with the street. Yes, with the dust going across the, across the street. Yeah, so, right next door. you know, because it's kind of a unique, you know, in Lynn's you know, case here, it's kind of unique because, you know, most of the stuff that is going to be a, a noise, noise issue, like a chainsaw or a four-wheeler or something like that, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a minimal amount of time. It's not all day, every day, you know, mm -hmm. so I do understand where you're coming from. I mean, it's, uh, it seems to happen in the evenings on the weekends. So we're not here when that happens. Okay. Yeah, it's usually, I mean, like 4.30 to whenever the sun goes down. And then on a Saturday, he'll, he'll run all day long out there. Yeah, I think, like I said, I think we just need to present it to him from the city that we have concerns about the activities going on out there. You know, and if it does continue, then, you know, maybe we'll take stricter actions or we'll try to figure out what our stricter actions, you know, can be. Not to say that, you know, we're going to tell them that they can or cannot have recreational riding out there for, for a while. But if it, you know, continues at the at the rate that it's going, it's 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 going to create a problem for for the citizens. Yeah, because we've been dealing with this for almost two years now, and we talk to them. We don't mind them riding. Right. It's just excessive. Yes. I mean, and I think we can approach that. You know, like yeah. I say, with the letter. You know, we're saying to, we have a gentleman <clears throat> next door or across the street. He won't even go out of his house. And dust on his deck. And me, I clean out my deck twice a year. Right. Usually, but now it's about once a week. Mm. I have to go out and bottle wash it. Okay. I brought them up last year and they apologized. They said, we will, we will water it down. And one time they tried to water it down. It was fine. Mm -hmm. you know? But the next day they started up and didn't bother it on again. So, you know, I don't want to be. Abusive to one the other no. or anything like that. But sometimes if I say something, it just automatically get all three of them running out there. Yeah, I, well, like I say, I mean, doing it just to be nasty. I mean, that, I mean yeah. hopefully well, our community, all hopefully all our community does not go down that direction. We're all been trying. Exactly. It's been not working. <clears throat> nope. I just ignored it. I think what I'm hearing is that we're agreeing that there's a problem that needs to be addressed, but this isn't the way we want to do it. So the council could just take no action on it and we'll just, uh, that'll just be the end of the discussion. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. we need to go to the limit, to the boundary yeah. of a, an ordinance now, but I, I don't think it's an issue that should go away, especially if, I mean, having a lot of dust in rural, that's like living near a farm. You're going to hear the gunfire from the birds and the, you know, that's just part of it. But my concerns are, are we having problems with the street and people can't see when they drive by? That's that's not good, so. Like the fog is on the Or on the freeway. Yeah, I mean, that's why they got rid of fill burning around here, right? Yeah. So, you know, yes, I mean, there are avenues that I think that we can take without making this an ordinance for the person. Like I say, I'm not speaking for the whole council. I mean, 
we get a chance to vote on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, mean, I spoke it, my piece. Yeah. I mean, what I'm what I'm seeing here is that there's there's a consensus that something needs to be done, but this isn't it. So the mayor can just adjourn the public hearing, and then we don't have to take any action at all. And okay. That. Fair enough. I'll I'll address the matter at a future meeting, but we won't do it through a desk ordinance. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say or add or no? It's, it's that you know we've tried to be real nice. All of us have this I'm not just gonna talk to them nicely. And then it's the same thing and come back just yeah, this one person they confronted me and they used the foulest language you could leave. I could kill you, but I'm not doing it. But it's just you know, it's unnecessary. Yeah. Was it the young man or the man? Well, he's not. But the father yeah. figure, the yeah. man of the house. And then, he, then when I took pictures of him, I got a whole bunch of pictures. Well, I was just curious because I, I could understand what the yeah. teenager kid running this house. Oh, but the ways he did the same thing. Yeah, and uh, if it was a, a father figure, that would be wrong to just you know, be, able to, be able to handle yeah, yourself. He's teaching you know. the boys to do the same thing. I like to say, hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, once we, you know, have conversations with them, I mean, maybe if we need to, if we can talk to a lawyer or something, figure out what our legal uh, rights are without making an amendment, you know, maybe uh, finding them or something like that for, yeah, you know, I can, creating I, there, dust clouds or something, I don't know. There are several ways I can look forward to right now to figuring out a resolution to the process, so. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's. Yeah, it's probably good for okay. the discussion now. So, I guess I will uh, adjourn this meeting. Adjourn the public hearing. Adjourn the public hearing. And uh, we'll do something different with this. Okay. Is that it for all this? We got one more. One more. Contract review board. Uh, okay. Right. So we'll open another public hearing. Yep. Uh, well, you don't need to. You just need to gavel in the session of the contract review board. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is this new for them? Uh, so there are two contracts. Contract review board. Okay. Well, the handle's on there solid. I don't know. He would. <laughs> yeah, pretty hard. Right. He's getting aggressive. Yeah. I don't know. Now, here's the feeling quieter. I'm going to sit over here by a D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Probably not going to be enough, but that's where I come in. <clears throat> it's getting most of it. Add that half out. Exactly. And we'll talk about this more in detail. Again, oh, yeah. I'd like to go back and say, okay, what does this mean? Where are we going? What about that property? And the tank? Oh, the yeah. Yada, so there's, yada. there's a really long involved process. Okay. Business already will walk through that um, every step of the way with it. Um, it's just um, we have to say we're going to go through with it first before they get the ball rolling. So once they do, I imagine this is probably going to be an item we discuss at the Reed Council meeting for the next few years as we talk about next what's year, going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> right. We're done with the years, man. We've been on this for, like I said, right. ever since I've been on council. I've been yeah. here six and a half years. We've been trying to get this thing resolved. So, yeah. Well, we're finally doing it. Yeah. We, so, we fixed Stodaville's water problem. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Fixing. Fixing. So where is Ray at on, on all of this? He's not here. Yeah, he's well, I know, but I mean, it's his property, right? As well. Yeah, yeah, so, we, uh, we have to my memory is right, we would have to work out with him to get a 100 foot radius around the well, plus the right away to the well. Right. Um, and what's his expectation? Well, I mean, I guess that's stuff that we can figure out going forward, right. I guess, but we need to know that before we, I mean, we still want to maintain the funds, but we need to figure out and the I early think, details. Yeah. I think Ray's fine with it all. Okay. Um, we want that in writing, though. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, and that's, that'll be part of the process. Yeah, he actually is the one that helps set up the well test. Right. So, yeah. You know, if he don't want to go with it, he would have helped out with that part of it. And then I guess early conversation around it, it says adding another 75,000 gallon tank. Do we need it? Well, that's. that's Go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to say, say that was in the original project. So. Yeah, and I know it was. And I felt at the time that we probably needed it. But I mean, my thought on it is. This thing is going to produce at, you know, 38 tank, gallons per minute. If you get an under tank, you're probably going to have to start treating the water. Well, it's going to be sitting too long. Yeah, my concern is that, you know, how, how often do we have to have a diver go in there and scrub it? Five years. Yeah, so then we'd have to do it twice, right? So the city, if, if we don't need the tank, right? you know, I don't see any reason to add another tank up there to add a secondary bill right. for maintaining that tank. Is that something engineering would tell us about yes. as far as whether it needs to be stored likely. or? Yeah. And I want to yeah. wash my car. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because yeah. I, I, I like, just, I'll, we're, we're asking a lot of questions and talking about process, things that'll be initiated and taken care of, but start. only after we oh, say, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah if we say, well, yeah. we want to wait, they're just going to go through five minutes. We're going to have to start the, the five year process all over again. Yeah, no, we don't want to do that. I mean, this is real. Because, yeah, you do that, you bring it online. Now, Everybody's out watering the yard. Everybody's washing their cars. Now we got to go back into water restrictions because of the overusage again. And I, yeah, possibility. I think that's something we can manage through, right? I mean, this thing's putting out 38 gallons per minute. But, right. And if we went to restrictions, we'd be able to maintain. Yeah. So we wouldn't have to truck watering. And my thought, like I said, I wrote out a bunch of numbers earlier. That's, uh, you know, 1,050 gallons um, per hour. So 24 mm -hmm. hours. Well, basically works out to 756,000 gallons a month that that's only doing it 30 minutes per hour right. using that pump. And I know most of our pumps do what about 20 minutes per hour? It depends. It's right like now, seven minutes on. Right now they're nine minutes, minutes an hour, most of them. Uh, during, yeah, 20 minutes during the wetter months. So even if we cut this down even in half from there, and produce almost 400,000 gallons. I mean, we didn't, well, we used 453,000 gallons this month, right? Yeah. So this one well would almost take care of the whole city. Yeah. Between that well and Supply. well one, we'd be pretty well off. So I'm, I, I, I'm <laughs> encouraged, man. I think it's, right? you know, I think it's this good. is something we needed to do a long time ago. Yeah. Does Ray get, how does, does Ray get paid? Does he sell the well? Does he get a kickback? From well, that's city? what we need yeah. to decide. That's what I was yeah. asking. Yeah, that's been, been, been six, eight years since we've talked about this, and there was some agreement somewhere along the line that uh, things got mixed around and changed around. So that was all. We've got to be yeah. What's what's yeah? Not yeah. just a good what's yeah. yeah. Right. So, so that's going to walk through all of that. Yeah, yeah. there okay. there are, there are ethics guidelines to follow with the rule yeah. for that. And Ray's also not running for city council again, so. And, that's that's like half the conflicts of interest taken care of right there. It's, right. Like, it's no longer here in the council. So, I mean, 
Yeah. I'm very, very encouraged that this thing's going to be able to sustain us for quite a while. Right. Yeah, very encouraged. Awesome. We did it. I mean, it's been four months since it's rained, and we're still getting 38 gallons. It's just day. amazing how it's rehashing something you guys have talked about. Mm -hmm. It should have been done you know, four and, years ago. It's like here it is, same conclusions you had prior that these weird word issues or descriptions. Just the way, just the way they went through the process, uh, because we 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 done it one more time. And, yet, yet. Yet. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, then the first engineer wrote the fact that it wasn't yeah. sustainable, and then the other engineers just went by their report, put their name on it, and yes. sent it back into it. But it was, no one was actually researching it out. It was very it was hard one. So, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, we need a motion on that, right? Yeah, we do need two motions. The first is to um, uh, adopt the authorized signature card, and the next one is to move forward. Part me with the project. So, yeah, the, the suggested motions are at the, the bottom of the item. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move to move forward with business Oregon project number S18003. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Cool. Now you gavel up the uh, the hearing. <laughs> this table makes a lot of noise. <laughs> That's the table, right? Blame the table. Yeah, blame the table, right? Okay, so now that was just down to public comment. This is the time to speak to the city council and for mayor at any subject other than what listed on the agenda, except for public hearing. This time we give three minutes. Any public testimony or comments? Okay, council reports. Any council have a report? We have a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll move to go home. I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> you do it okay. That's it. Okay. I don't know. I've been around for 10 minutes trying to find a page because I thought I lost track. Right. Hell yeah. Why didn't you do that earlier? All in favor say aye. Aye. Nope. Okay. It's done. Well, thank you for coming in, Lynn. Yeah. We'll try to get something resolved for you. Yeah. So we'll try. Hopefully, there'll be a friend who reached.